Hello, hello, and welcome once again to a Beatles show that we call Things We Said Today. This is a weekly program where we talk about what's going on in the world of the Beatles as far as what's happening in the news. And fortunately, these days, there's a lot of things going on in the news. I'm Ken Michaels, one of the co-hosts of the show, best known for my syndicated Beatles program called Every Little Thing. And I'm being joined by my co-host, Mr. Beatles Examiner, Steve Marinucci. Hi, Steve. Hi, Ken. Hello, everyone. On today's program, well, we got a little treat here for you because, as many of you have heard, there's a brand new Ringo Starr exhibit that opened up at the Grammy Museum in Los Angeles. And our own Steve was there the day before it opened, and uh, Ringo was there for a big uh, press event, and uh, I thought Steve would share uh, what he experienced at uh, the press event. Well, it was, it was, it was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, there were, there were, uh, it was a press event, so there was a lot of, a lot of media there. Um, there were also some members of the, of the Grammy Museum there. I guess they had invited a few of them in, but it was it was fun. Uh, Ringo came on. Uh, they, they uh, there's a 17 minute film by Ringo's videographer Brent Carpenter that's in the exhibit that they showed to the media before Ringo came out, and it's basically a conglomeration of all his videos. Uh, uh, the Harry Nelson video is uh, uh, only you is in there. Um, there's some Beatle footage in there too. There's uh, some footage from Washington Coliseum. There's footage from A Hard Day's Night. There's there's all. It's just a video conglomeration of of Ringo's life, uh, and it's a cute little it's a cute little film. So this uh, is something that you would see for anyone that goes to the museum, or was right. this just for the press event? No, I no. It's included in the exhibit. Okay. They 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 said it was included in the exhibit. They were still playing with the exhibit and putting it together when we were there. Um, there was a poster with um, the credits of all the people who had donated items that they actually were replacing in the middle of replacing while we were there because they had this big blue X over the over this poster. And I saw the the guy taking the post the new poster and starting to put it up. So they were still they weren't completely finished with getting everything together but they had you know every all the everything was behind the glass and everything all the items were behind the glass and so we were able to see that and and to and you know take pictures and everything and the interactive uh parts of the uh of the exhibit were up and we got to play with those too which I'll I'll talk about a little more but um Ringo Ringo came out he uh only spoke for about ten minutes, I, I I was expecting he would actually talk a little longer, but he didn't. Um, the questions weren't really directly related to the related to the exhibit, which I don't know. I kind of think that was the reason why he cut it short. But hmm. you know, w- one person asked about uh, whether uh, the Beatles jammed with Elvis, and he said, "No matter what you've read, the Beatles did not jam with Elvis." Okay. And, um, he al- somebody also asked about the release of Let It Be, and he just kind of threw it off and said, uh, "Any day now." So you know, you can t- I guess you can a- interpret that at whatever way you want to, but I just took that as a complete non-answer. As he, you know, as they usually, as the Beatles are usually want to do, you know, when you ask about things like this, they will not say what's coming. They like to do the announcements themselves. So. My feeling on let be just off the you know for what it's worth is that it will come out this year, but that's just my feeling. Uh-huh. And I have no, I have nothing to to go on as far as that goes. Well, but anyway, as far on... as the exhibit goes, it, it was it was it's very nice. Uh, a lot of the items are directly from Ringo and Barbara's collection because it says so, and and there's some great stuff in there. I mean, there's uh, several drum kits. Yeah, there's I have the... seen online. They show you the the Ed Sullivan. The, mm-hmm. the drum kit he used there, yep. and on the Apple rooftop too. Yep, that's there. As is the jacket he wore, or the the the, the rain coat, the Mac he wore on the on the Apple rooftop. That's there. His outfit from only you, from only you, and Goodnight Vienna is there. Mm. There's just a ton of. I'm I'm looking at some of the pictures here uh, on my computer. Um, there's just a ton of of stuff, and he was saying how he was surprised. That he had all this stuff, he right. didn't really realize uh, what he had. Also, what they what they what they did was they put up some memorabilia, like the um, the Ringo bubble bath is there. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
the Ringo for President bumper sticker is there. There's a Ringo fanzine. It says Ringo's photo album from 60, one of those 64 magazines, you know, 1964 magazines is there. There's all sorts of portraits of Ringo. There's a video of people talking about Ringo. One of them is Max Weinberg. Um, nice. Yeah, there's it, 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 there's pictures from the ebook. There's his artwork, his computer artwork that he sells at, at the All Star Band shows. Tell me what's there from his childhood. His there there are baby pictures. There's a hospital uh, uh, form from his childhood. I think one of his grade school uh, report cards is there. There isn't obviously a lot from that far back, but there is a little bit. There's there's a, a note from Rory Storm. That says um, uh, to t- that tells him to meet the- meet him. I believe it's in Hamburg, and he says, "I have your drums and your money." <laughs> and Ringo actually mentioned that, and, and that's one of the things he's real proud of having in there is that note from Rory. Huh. So there is I, stuff- I believe Ringo also said that uh, a lot of stuff he got from his mother. Right. He was surprised he, he, how much his mother had saved. Right. He mentioned that too, uh, saying that um, they did, apparently that was just opened up within the last year or two, um, and he said he was stunned that she had saved so much stuff. But um, there's just an amazing amount of stuff in there. Um, is there, is up, there more? It, I just want to know beyond the Beatles stuff, is there more from the Rory Storm days other than the letter? There's a little bit more. There's not too much more. They didn't. One thing they did not do is give us a an itemized list of everything, and I'm Sorry that I did. I, I had. I wrote down a lot of stuff, but uh, yeah, there is a little bit more from the pre-Beatle days than just that one note. Um, there's a there's a couple of things in there. The exhibit takes up about a good part of the second floor. Uh, if and for any of you that have been there, it's on the same level with the, the stage where the uh, where they've had the musical performances where Ringo himself performed. Two years ago, so that's where it, that's where it is. They had the rest of the museum closed off. So, for example, there's a Beach Boys exhibit there that I did not get to see while I was there, unfortunately. But uh, there's there's this, there's a lot of stuff to see. The best part in my uh, you know the best thing that really is there are the two inter- interactive booths, and one of which is. You go in, and Ringo says, I'm going to teach you how to sing Yellow Submarine. And he starts, and they start playing Yellow Submarine, and he directs you to sing it into the microphone, and then they play it back. They play about the first half of the song back, and your voice is, is in there. And if your voice is anything like mine, you just kind of cringe, and you go, no. <laughs> but uh, that's, So they're, that's, they're using the actual Beatles recording, just yes, the, the backing are. tracks, yeah, and you're they, singing with it? Yeah, they, they're, you're singing along with the actual Beatles recording. Mm-hmm. And then the, the 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 best thing, though, and the real reason, if you have any way, you know, if you're wavering to go to this thing, the real reason to go is the uh, interactive drum lessons. There's two drum kits, um, so in other words, two people can do it at once. And Ringo is is in the video, and he he actually runs through uh, rudimentary drumming, and has you follow along. And there's three different lessons, and he even says that this is the same stuff he taught Zach, and and that uh, made Zach decide to go out and uh, become a drummer, because uh, he said, you know, if you can do this, you can drum, and and it's fantastic. That is really, you know, and that gives you kind of a little bit of a an inner look at Ringo's drumming. You know, it's not really, it's not as, it's not all that complex, and you know, you won't learn how to to do, uh, you know, some of the stuff he's done, but, I mean, you get to see, you know, the very basics of, of what he knows, and it's really it's really a lot of fun. That part is is, uh, is a lot of fun. Yeah, I know that uh, in the past you were saying how you wish that Ringo would put out some kind of uh, tutorial of some mm-hmm. kind where you can, you can actually see him play the parts that you're used to hearing right. on this Beatle is, Records. Right. This is a little all. bit of that. It's not, it's not very much, um, but it is some. And, uh, you know, it gives you, for, for somebody like me who doesn't, who's never played drums before, it gives you a, you know, a, a real basic look at what drumming is. Um, for anybody that, um, that knows drumming, um, one of the things he, first thing he, t- he teaches you is boom chick, which is just 
tapping into the bass drum and and hitting the one of the cymbals. Mm-hmm. And he and he and he just goes boom chick boom chick boom chick and that's what you that's what you do and you follow him in doing it and okay. it, it it's it's just so great that's just wonderful to be able to do that you know even even at that basic level it's nice to to be able to see to do that with him right so, huh tell me some of the unusual Beatles items that are there from Ringo's own archives. Um, I mean, I would expect a, a you know a drum set to be there anyway. So. Well, there's like I said, there's several drum kits. There's um, there's the uh, nudie um, uh, nudie uh, jacket uh, that uh, the designer nudie uh, design the the guy who did all the garish outfits. His, that's there. There's uh, outfits from uh, uh, Let It Be. There's outfits from. The All Star Band. There's some All Star Band stuff. Uh, one of the drum kits is, is one of the All Star Band kits. Mm-hmm. Um, and in fact, uh, they had a, a private uh, party the next night, and, and a lot of the members of the All Star Band was there. I'm looking at a, a poster uh, you were mentioning about uh, Rory Storm items. There's a poster uh, that um, lists both Rory Storm and the Beatles, and it lists Rory Storm above the Beatles. Okay. So, um, well, a lot of people aren't aware how popular Rory Storm was. Right. You know? um, there's several. Um, there's a. There's a. Uh, there's a telegram, and I'm, I'm looking at it now, and I'm trying to figure out. It says, "Address Roy Young, Star Club, Hamburg, Signed contract. Sorry, Ringo." That's what. It, that's what it says. So that's. Uh, inter- oh, here's here's the contract. It says, "We will pay you 400 German marks a week from 1st June 1962." Until 13th April 1963, please come by aeroplane. We pay the fare, Roy Young Star Club. And that telegram is in there. Uh, it was sent to uh, Ringo in Liverpool, to Admiral Grove. So Roy Young sent that? Yeah, to it's Ringo. signed by Roy Young. Very interesting. Mm-hmm. Wow, Roy Young was the keyboard player that played with them. Yeah, I believe, I believe he was already, I think uh, he was already in Hamburg, I think, um, at the time. Um, a lot of people may not know that name because um, he played with the Beatles in Hamburg on a, for some gigs. I don't know exactly how many, but he was—he's recognized as a really great musician. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They've got contracts. Yeah, here's. Uh, I'm looking. They have the one of the con- Beatle contracts is is there. It mentions now. It mentions Liverpool and Fortland Road. So I'm assuming this is actually Liverpool. But um, yeah, there's there's Beatle contracts in there. Uh, as I said, there's there's tons of drum kits. There's a, a Beatle doll, a Ringo doll from the one of the old Remco dolls. There's <laughs> record covers. There's a uh, there's a uh, a butcher cover in there. Um, some record collectors. Jeff Osberger is one of them. Uh, has uh, donated some stuff for the for the uh, exhibit. There's photos from the ebook. Anybody that's gotten the ebook will recognize some of the photos in there. Um, like I said, there's his artwork. There's a timeline. There's a guitar. The outfits are really what's what's fun to see. Some of the the outfits he's worn over the years. There's the there's the hospital pass. There's a hospital pass. It says patient's name Richard Starkey, and it's got the ward number and it says date of issue uh, sixteen eight fifty four, which is eight sixteen fifty four. That probably was one of the things from his mother. It says this card must be produced every, each visiting day. So that was while he was in the hospital. Here's a uh, an entry, and I'm I got I'm gonna see how this applies. Uh, it's from it's to Mr. It says Mr. Clayton. Is that is Eddie it, is Clayton? That, I'm sorry, uh, Eddie Clayton. Okay. Probably from yeah, it says, he was in a skiffle group. Ringo right, was in that says, before. Daily Rory. sketch national skiffle contest. You're, Entry for the above contest has been allocated to this theater in accordance with the rules of the contest. I shall be obliged if you will arrange for your group to present themselves with instruments at 11 a.m. on Sunday next. And that's a little bit wiped out. I can't read it. For a <laughs> rehearsal of your competition number and to get the feel of the theater stage, you will appreciate the necessity of this request in order that the best possible presentation can be affected when the performance is given in public. Details of your date of appearance next week will be applied on Sunday morning. I urge your cooperation in this matter for the convenience of all parties, and it says yours truly, A.L. Boot Manager. So, yeah, that's that's what that is. So 
there's yeah, there's all sorts of little documentation. There's a business card uh, of the Eddie Clayton Skiffle Group, and I said there was a report card there. I'm looking at it now. There's a report card from uh, from uh, him, and I can't see what year it is, but it's from the 50s. There's just all sorts of amazing stuff in here. The handwritten lyrics for "Don't Pass Me By." Oh, nice. Yeah, there's just a ton of a ton of stuff. Um, the yellow submarine booth actually looks really nice. It's got a yellow submarine painted on the outside and everything like that. So that looks really neat. And so what what exactly is the booth? What's inside it? In the booth is a screen and a microphone, and it says it. And when you go in, it says press. Oh, that's when you sing Yellow Submarine. Right, that's oh, okay. when you sing Yellow Submarine, right. right. So how much of this exhibit is Beatles, percentage-wise, would you say? Uh, probably a, a third to a half. Okay. Yeah, I, probably close to a half. That's a pretty healthy amount. Yeah, um, uh, because, I mean, there's just so many costumes from, I mean, the Pepper costume is there. And unlike the Lennon exhibit, which had a lot of, Facsimiles, the Ringo one does not. Um, I there was one, and I can't remember which one it was. There was one suit or one drum kit that was that was a facsimile. I can't remember which one off the top of my head now. But uh, most of the stuff in the exhibit is real, and I'm I was glad that they were able to do that. That was one of the things that um, I was a little disappointed with in the London exhibit, but that's not the case here. The Ringo exhibit has a lot of real stuff, and obviously because it came directly from Ringo. Hmm. So, Are there a lot of photos in this exhibit, and are all of them or most of them from his new book? There's a number of, I think most of the photos are from, will be from either the e-book or the, or the upcoming book in, in, later on in the year, which promises to expand how much content there will be. So the ebook I believe has like 300 pictures and the the printed book is going to be even more and um now, that's going to be kind of interesting. I'm I'm actually surprised it's not the other way around, but the ebook if you don't if if you have an iPad um is really kind of a must get um I think. Not be, just because it's Ringo but because you get to play around with some of the stuff. There are videos of him talking. It's uh, the, there are videos in the ebook that are not in the exhibit of him directly talking about various chapters in his life, um, giving an overview of the whole of the whole project. So for that reason, that's a good, you know, a very good reason to get the ebook hmm. if you can get it. If you can, if you have a, an iPad, unfortunately, it's only available for the iPad, which is really kind of a shame, because you know anybody with a Kindle or something would love to be able to have this. Right. And um, it's not available for anything but the iPad, unfortunately. So, and there's some great pictures. There's some. Uh, there's some. Uh, there's some nice pictures. There's one of him of him catching uh, Paul and Mal Evans fooling around and. Him with uh, Harry Nelson and him uh, 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 riding a horse and uh, him w- catching uh, John and Paul in the studio. There's just a ton of great pictures in here. So, so wow. uh, how much that, of how much of the book are his own photos that he took himself? Do you um, know which ones are his? He claims that most of them. I mean, there's obviously the ones with him in them. You know, aren't <laughs> right. aren't taken by him. Um, but I, I'm guessing. Th- Maybe three quarters or more are his, because there he is in so you know he is in a bunch of photos, obviously, um, and it would be hard to to guess that he hard to think that he took all the ones that he's in. So, but there's a lot that he's that he's in. So um, it's interesting because I don't know if you remember this or not, but a while back I had brought up here on this show. The whole idea that, from what I had heard about Ringo through the years, is that he really loves to take photographs. Oh, yeah, and there's a lot of them in here. In fact, he points up one that I'm looking at right now. He brought it up, um, I, I, believe, I believe he brought it up uh, on the Today Show, where it's the one of uh, George and John in front of the tape recorder with the tape recorder plugged into the speaker. Right, I saw that. Right. And uh, that's in the ebook, and that um, I believe is in the exhibit too. Um, but yeah, I mean, he talks about 
there's there's just a, there's a lot of not every like I said not everything in the ebook is in the exhibit and vice versa so there's a little bit of both but right. uh but what what I was commenting on before was that we had wondered why he never put out a book of photographs mm-hmm. <laughs> and now he's doing just that now he's doing just that mhm believe it or not that was one thing I was going to ask him when they cut the, the questions off and uh I was I had my hand raised and everything. I was ready to ask, and they cut everything off. I was like, oh, darn, I should have asked sooner. But, oh, well. Well, the beyond, beyond the obvious of, uh, of photos of the other Beatles, I would have loved to have seen if Ringo has had an interest in other types of photography, like doing nature photos and stuff like there that. Are, there are some other photos in the ebook. book uh, There's a couple of uh, what you could call, I guess, photos under medication. <laughs> <laughs> I think really? he uses that word too. Um, <laughs> so there are there are some other photo photos like that. There's one of, in particular of a cat. Uh, he calls it angry cat. So he he does do other. He doesn't just shoot the Beatles. It's, there are other photographs in there. Yeah. There's one actually of uh, of uh, fans in America. He shot he shot fans in a car in the U.S. Right. Looking at him. So. Yeah, no, there's other there's other things in there. In the exhibit itself, is there much about Ringo's acting career and stuff from his films? Because that's something that's, these days, it's really overlooked. Yeah, there is a little bit. There's Like I said, there's a picture of him in Blind Man in the e-book, and I believe it's in the exhibit. And there's, I believe there's a, there was a clip in the, the video compilation of... Um, from uh, Magic Christian, which was good to see because I had not seen that in a long time, and uh, that was kind of that was kind of fun. There is a little bit of film stuff in there. Not a, a candy wasn't in there. I was actually surprised that there was nothing from. At least I don't recall anything from Candy mm-hmm. uh, in there. But um, or Caveman. Yes, Caveman was there. Caveman was in the video compilation because they show him and Barbara. And uh, by the way, I did not see Barbara, but Barbara was there. Um, Rob Shanahan, his photographer, sent me some photos that I ran yesterday. Um, actually, well, by the time everybody sees the show, it'll be about a week or so. But uh, Rob sent me some photos, that uh, some new photos taken uh, of Ringo touring the exhibit himself. And the one, one, the one he sent me had him and Barbara. And I didn't, like I said, Barbara didn't come out on stage with him. I did not see her around although I assume she was there um, the day of the press preview. so. Okay. As far as the All-Star Band is concerned, are there photos of the All-Star Bands, the different lineups through the years, anything like that? No. I, I, there's very little on the All-Star Band uh, to my, that I recall. Um, there is, a, there is the, the, the drum kit, and I think there's, there's an outfit from the, one of his costumes from the All-Star Band, um, but there isn't a whole lot. There isn't a running... There isn't a, a um, history of the All Star Band as I as I recall, which is kind of strange. I, mean, I don't know, maybe I missed it, but I did not see that. Um, I, I would kind of expect there to be because you, it's you been would. such a big part of his career now. Right, you would you would expect that. He's had um, so many killer lineups. You'd think that there might be. It, it would leave room for so many amazing photos and videos. And the ebook um, ends early in his solo career. So it does not really have a lot of uh, All Star Band stuff. So, are there you know, photos? Are there photos of Ringo in session work with either the Beatles or his solo albums? There is photos of. I believe there's a session, one or two session photos from the Beatles. I don't believe there are any any solo photos. I don't recall seeing any of those. Hmm. Uh, I'm looking through the photograph because I photographed just about everything there was. Again, I'm looking at them here, and I don't see any of that. Most of the stuff is is uh, objects to look at. Uh, that's basically the the sleeveless. Uh, I believe the sleeve. I, I was saying one of them is not um, is a replica. I believe the sleeveless jacket or the uh, collarless jacket that's there is a replica. Okay. Um, so. And there weren't too many, uh, uh, it was a press preview, so there weren't a lot of recognizable faces around, but one of the people, uh, one of the uh, people that was there was Jackie DeShannon. 
Oh, nice. And I talked to I talked to her briefly at the end, and there were also, there were a couple of uh, Beatle authors there too. Ken Sharp was there. Mm-hmm. Um, Good author. And um, it was it, it was an interesting. Like I said, I really wish he had talked a little longer and you know answered a few more questions, but it was nice to have him there. And uh, you know he did get to he did get to see the. It's obviously something he's extremely proud of. And um, you know I made the point in one of my columns that after having said he was not going to write a book, he's basically kind of put his autobiography in, in these, ex- in the exhibit, in the ebook and in, in the forthcoming book, uh, this fall. So there you go. Um, okay. it's not a, you know, he's gonna, it's basically going to be uh, my life in pictures, which is, which is fine. Cause he's really digging out a lot of things that nobody has seen. And that's, that's very, very cool. And there's also, I don't know if you saw it or not, but there's like a two-minute video that I've seen online where he's kind of running through a lot of the stuff at the exhibit. And he's just really enjoying himself and how mm-hmm. proud he is of, of a lot of this stuff. I did see that preview. That is not included in the exhibit. Um, like I said, there's the thing with Max Weinberg uh, talking and, and other people talking, but he does not tour you. At least, at least I didn't have it set up. If they... If, if that's in the exhibit, it wasn't there for the press preview. But uh, there's, I mean, there's just plenty to look around and see, and and uh, it's not, it it's really uh, daunting to be within, you know, view of some of these things that you've seen three billion times, like on film, like the the uh, Mac from the uh, Let It Be rooftop sessions and mm-hmm. stuff, and the, you know, and and the uh, the green jacket and the only you outfit, right. And what's funny is, if he really wanted to, he probably could still fit in all of them. That's what's re- <laughs> <laughs> that's what's really funny because because uh, somebody I've seen comments on how you know that he's really tiny and or, you know he's really small and he is. He came up on stage and I was he walked kind of right by me. He came in. I was sitting on the left, and he came kind of right up on stage uh, next to me. And yes, he is not very big. Uh, he's and a, he's also extremely fit and thin. Oh, yes. That so. he is. He's exceptionally fit. Yeah. He's exceptionally fit. Uh, good for him. God bless him for, for getting, you know, for doing something that a lot of people don't have the uh, strength to do. But uh, And that's not easy, especially, you know, considering, you know, the way things were back in the uh, 60s and 70s. But uh, he's done it. He looks fantastic. He really does. And you can see there's a there's a one of the clips in the video compilation in that little 17 minute uh, thing is him and Mark Bolin, and you can see a a vast difference uh, then and now mm-hmm. definitely. And the one with Harry with Harry too the same thing. But the Mark Bolin clip really kind of shows the the incredible difference. In fact, I'm, I have a I shot some uh, I took some uh, screen captures. Uh, Oh, and there's one, and I can't, can't, God, which, well, I can't remember which video it is where he is absolutely bald. Uh, well, in 1976, he was. Yeah. During Ringo's Rotogravure. There are videos of him. Right. Uh, during the video of You Don't Know Me at All, where he's there completely we go. bald. Yeah, they yeah. showed that. Yeah. And, and I looked at and I, I went, I had forgotten about that one. And, uh, <laughs> but there it was. And they also showed, they showed the, uh, the compilation shows uh, Alice in Wonderland. Uh, so that's in there. Um, there's also how about of, Thomas the Tank Engine and all that. Uh, Thomas wasn't in there, surprisingly enough. Um, there is a Thomas doll in the in the exhibit, but not there wasn't any. I don't recall any clips. They showed the the 17 minute clip a couple of times, and uh, I don't recall that. Uh, I can't forget him and Harry though. That uh, was very touching to see that. Uh, you know, that's worth seeing too. They just run the gamut. I suppose you could do three floors of his stuff. Oh, you know, easily. Easily, and uh, you know there is a there are other exhibits in the Grammy Museum besides his. So, um, but yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun to see. Okay, and this is running at the Grammy Museum in L.A. through March of mm-hmm. next year, and hopefully it's going to tour beyond that. And I'd love to see it on the East Coast, especially. They usually extend the uh, running dates of these things after the initial closing dates, and it wouldn't surprise me if they hold it over for a month or two um, before they 
move it around. The thing is, though, that the Lenin hasn't gone anywhere, and neither has the Harrison. And so I'm kind of skeptical that that will happen. I hope it does. But all I can say is if you really, really want to see this thing, get to Los Angeles and see it if you can. Well, that sounds great, and, I, and also it seems like a natural to go to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland. Let's hope it goes there, too. Yes, I, I would think it'll probably go there. Before we end this show, I uh, just want to let you folks know there's a number of ways you can get in touch with us. We have our own email address. You can write to us at thingswesaidtodayradioshow at gmail.com. We also have a Facebook page for Things We Said Today. I have my own for Ken Michaels. I have my own website, KenMichaelsRadio.com. And on the website, you'll find interviews with lots of people in the Beatle world and trivia posted every week. And in fact, throughout the end of June, I have something called Mac a Month in which I have Paul McCartney trivia posted every week. And you can win the Wings Over America remaster or some other great McCartney prize. And I'm doing that every week through the end of the month of June on uh, KenMichaelsRadio.com. And if people want to get in touch with you, Steve, they can do so how? They can email me at BeatlesExaminer at gmail.com. Um, my columns are on um, Examiner.com. I have a Facebook page under my own name, uh, I have, and I have a Beatles Examiner page. And I'm also running a, a, a page with Paul McCartney Tour News, which I'm getting ready to update uh, again, and uh, I'm keeping... keeping uh, up to date, and uh, there's all sorts of stuff going on. But uh, if you want to write to me, feel free uh, uh, either write to us at uh, things we said today radio show at gmail.com, or you can write to me individually at Beatles Examiner at gmail.com. All right, great. So that puts the show to a close. And I'm Ken Michaels for things we said today, thanking all of you for listening, and I'll see you next time. And this is Steve Marinucci saying, take care, everybody, and we'll see you next time.